All right, what's up, guys? It's Anthony from AB Fitness Center here, and I'm back with another episode today. Today, we're going to talk about maximizing results during Ramadan. Now, Ramadan's a Muslim holiday that's coming up. It's actually Thursday, the 23rd, I believe. And um, it's a month long holiday where basically you have to fast. And I brought on, uh, I don't want to call him the, uh, the fasting expert, but uh, I could call him that because he's been fasting for what, 33 years during Ramadan? Yes, I have, sir. How are you doing today, Anthony? <laughs> Good, good. So this is my this is my old buddy. He's not old. I keep saying that, but he's my old friend. We've actually been friends since first grade. So yep. I like to welcome on Kareem. So Kareem, what's up, bud? Thank How you, you for having me, man. I'm great, man. I'm looking forward to Ramadan and I'm looking forward to this episode. A lot of people have been asking me questions as we come closer. So I'm going to refer them right to you after this episode. Yeah. I mean, we've had a ton. Of, I always get a ton of questions for it every year. And, uh, you know, we've done fasting before, so I kind of I know the answer to that, but I think it'd be cool to have you on because you could talk about your experience with it. Like I said, you've been doing it for 33 years now, fasting during mm. this time, so you can give a lot of insight behind it. So my first question is, because I, I want to see if I actually beat you, what's the longest you've ever fasted for? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. It would be 4.30 in the morning to about 8.45 p.m. So what is that? So, I'm hard about math, man. 12 plus 4, 16, 16 and a quarter, 16 and a half hours. Wow, I beat you. Look at that. I'm surprised. The longest you did that I've for ever, how many days? I've only – well, hold on. So I'll tell you. So I did 26, <laughs> I did 26 hours, but I, but I drank water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we so, have a couple of memes about those comments in Ramadan. <laughs> oh, do you really? That's funny. Cause I, so again, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I know it's a Muslim holiday and I really don't know much about it. So uh, let's talk about the history behind fasting just in general with Ramadan and why it has to be done. I, I want to be educated on it. So right. school us. So uh, we're, we're not allowed even water though. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a little difficult, especially now that it's in the summer months. Ramadan doesn't come at the same time every year. Uh, it's a lunar calendar. Uh, so every year it moves back about 10 or 11 days. So it goes with the cycles of the moon. And you have to wait for the uh, moon sighting in order to know when Ramadan is. So I know it. you said it might be Wednesday, but it, uh, you said Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it, it might be Friday. So there's like different schools of thought. Uh, but either way, people that fast for a month, the reason behind it, uh, there are a ton, but uh, mainly it's uh, for discipline. Uh, to humble yourself and bring yourself back down to earth in those 30 days. You know, uh, too often we get occupied with our work and our school and money and finances and what's the next best thing we could be doing. And this is a time to just reflect and uh, come back down to earth and realize that there are a lot less fortunate than you because this month is not just about fasting. It's about giving the entire month as much as possible. Uh, so, yeah, from sunrise, uh, we don't eat until sunset and we repeat for 30 days. That's awesome. I love that. Actually, I didn't know that about the discipline thing. And that's a really, really awesome way to, to teach everyone discipline, not being yeah. able to eat or especially drink. Especially with working out because working out requires discipline. Yeah, for sure. So if you build and, it in that month, you'll be good. So why no water during the fast? I'm just curious. Um, still- you're just, just how the fast is. Uh, no water, no food, no nothing. Is it um the because I remember you doing it as a kid and uh you know I was like oh my god that must be so hard. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, I remember as kids uh, when you used to do it in school and you used to say I I can't eat anything, I can't drink anything. I'm like oh that's crazy, yeah. that's crazy. Well, as kids it was easy for me because back then sunset would be around five thirty and uh, that's a breeze and I used to think that was hard. Now sunset is like eight seven thirty and yeah, I'm like man long. it's a long day, but it's okay because now you're used to it as an adult. Right. You know, we have a lot of clients who celebrate Ramadan and, you know, most of the time when Ramadan comes up, everybody gets nervous about exercising and, you know, just in general. So I, I thought it would be really cool because, you know, you're a fitness enthusiast yourself and you exercise pretty regularly. And, you know, we've actually competed in bodybuilding shows together. So um, I believe you were a personal trainer at one point as well. Yes. But, um, you know, I, I think it's awesome to hear from you because, you know, for me, everyone's like, oh, you know, you're already in shape. What do you know? So I think that's perfect <laughs> from coming from someone like you who celebrates every year religiously, obviously does this every year. So uh, let's talk about, you know, your tips for fasting just in general, what makes it easier for you? Just let's talk about that first. Well, as far as this is just a bunch of things that come into it. So are we talking about food or? Yeah, we'll start with the food part because I know we'll there's start a lot with of food. 
I know there's a lot yeah. of elements to fasting that are, that can be difficult. Yeah. So the biggest thing, and I know you said it on your uh, latest, uh, I think it was a Facebook video. Don't shop while hungry. Don't go to the supermarket while hungry because you're going to eat with your eyes. And that's exactly what happens to every person that fasts in Ramadan. Almost every person. They end up going to the supermarket and getting all these things. And then come uh, time to break your fast and your stomach shrinks after a few days of this. So you can no longer eat the same portion you were eating the first day a week later. And so you have all this food left over and you don't know what to do with it. And some people say, you know what? Well, I'm going to eat from sunset until sunrise. I'm just going to keep eating. But that's not how the fast is supposed to work. So uh, physically speaking, it's impossible to do that. You're going to become bloated and you're going to ruin all your fitness goals. And then uh, spiritually speaking, you're actually not allowed to do that. So when you break your fast, you're, um, you're supposed to eat one th- fill your stomach one third of food, then one third of liquid. And one third should be empty for air and f- for the reason of being able to pray. Because if you, do, if you stuff your face, you will not be able to pray. And if you hmm. can't pray, your fast is no. Right. So prayer, moving around, exercising, all that stuff, you need to leave some space. And that's, what, that's the problem a lot of people get into. And that's why people stop working out during Ramadan because they feel like, oh, I can't eat as much. Or if I do eat as much, my stomach feels heavy. And then I can't go to the gym. I can't work out. But that's your own fault. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I, I actually have a good question for you. So you, you've heard of intermittent fasting. And for those of you that might of be course. listening to this who may have not, intermittent fasting is basically you have a certain period of time. And again, the hours always vary depending on the individual who, how they want to follow it. So typically it's a 12 hour fast and then an eight hour eating window. So now with the kind of resurgence of intermittent fasting, I mean, I know you probably laugh at, at intermittent fasting because again, like I said, you've been doing it for no, 33 years. <laughs> right. But you've been doing it for so long and now it's like a thing in fitness. But um, in the sense of fitness wise, is it very similar to that? Except in, in your case, it's more like the timing. Yeah. In, in my case, you would have to time your workouts uh, In intermittent fasting. You're still allowed certain things while you fast, such as water. Yeah. Um, and so hydration is key no matter what kind of fast you're doing. So if you're allowed water, I think you can, you, you can still follow the workout routine that you've been following even before you started intermittent fasting. But if you're just fasting uh, like uh, Muslims do in Ramadan, uh, it is it is not possible to follow the same routine. You have to change your schedule around based on your uh, eating habits and your drinking habits. Right. All right. Well, that perfect because it leads me into my next question. So, you know, for you and your personal experience in this, uh, obviously not drinking water is rough. I know I said the longest I ever went without food was twenty six hours. But as far as like drinking water, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I yeah. can last the, the that long. Um, but. As far as like the best time for you to actually work out in that case, I know now that sunset is later, sunrise is early. What do you find to be the best time for you to actually get to the gym? And kind of what's, so let's talk about that first and then we'll talk about like so a daily routine. Depends on what kind of workout we're talking. If we're talking about an aerobic exercise versus anaerobic exercise, there will be different times. So in the morning, I would definitely do hit cardio. So usually what Muslims do is wake up uh, before sunset. So sunset this year is around 5.30. So I'd wake up at 4.30 and prepare myself a meal that will not cause me heartburn, that will not cause me to be dehydrated for the rest of the day. So low sodium, very, very healthy meal in the morning, like yogurt, uh, cucumber, oatmeal, um, eggs, stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I'll just throw a shake in the blender. I'll put some uh, dates, if nobody knows what that is, and uh, <laughs> oat milk and bananas and peanut butter and just put it in the blender and just drink that. And then I'll pray and then I'll go back to sleep and and go about my day. Uh, And before I do that, I'll go for a quick run uh, around the block uh, or do some hit cardio at home with a burpees or something. And then before the fast, uh, before I break the fast is when I'll do my anaerobic workout and actually lift weights uh, 45 minutes before I, I break my fast. That way I can just come straight home or even if I'm working out at home now that we're quarantined, uh, I'll work out before the fast and then I'll, I'll eat right away, but I'll break my fast with a banana, a date, and some water, and then continue working out, shower, and then come back and have dinner. Awesome. I love that because uh, at the end of this, I'm going to give some of my tips, uh, and that's actually you kind of gave everything away already. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, man. It's good. That means that I was right, and I think that you're right on par. So um, I think that's, that's it's really cool. I like the, the whole sense that you said that Ramadan is more about discipline because now that gives it more meaning. And I think that I could also talk to people about that and saying like, you know, it's, it's a holiday for discipline. And, you know, like you said, fitness requires discipline. And how hard is it during that time to, 
I, I would say now you're probably used to it, but for someone listening, someone like myself who's outside of it, it's got to be tempting during the day when you get hungry out of those hunger pains. What do you do to kind of minimize that? And what have you done in the past? Like, what are some things that you could do to kind of overcome that part of it? You know, it's funny. I discussed this with uh, a group of my peers before this podcast, and all of us can agree we never get hungry. We get thirsty more than we get hungry. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, uh, n- never really get hungry ever. I mean, I don't remember the last time I was fasting and I got hungry. So, and what do you, what do you do to like when you could become thirsty like that and you want something to drink? What do you do? Uh, you got to think about something else. <laughs> you just can't drink. You got to take your mind off of it. And uh, similar to what you would do if you had an anxiety attack or if you, you know, ha- were in a bad mood, you just have to find your coping mechanisms and coping skills and, and use them to the best of your ability. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you got to take a nap. <laughs> hey, that's true. It's a good one. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk a little bit about the science behind this and you know how fasting can benefit actually losing weight. So one of the things that I talk about all the time is, you know, your body doesn't understand the difference between foods. It mainly sees, you know, calories in versus calories out. So what that says, what that, what that means is, and you, you touched on this very early on in this podcast is this, you know, if you're trying to lose body fat, and let's just say for argument's sake, you're supposed to eat whatever, 2,000 calories every day to lose weight. It doesn't matter if you eat those 2,000 calories over the entire day, the 24 hours, or you eat it all in two hours, as long as you're having those 2,000 calories. But I think what people think is during Ramadan that because they're fasting all day, that they could just eat endlessly. Exactly. And- and a lot of people will, will say, you know, during Ramadan, even though I'm fasting for 30 days, I'm gaining weight. So do you have any insight on that? Yeah, it's because they're overeating their calories. So th- they're saving, basically what I call it is banking your calories. So you're banking your calories. So let's just say, for example, I want to go out to eat with my wife and I'm dieting right now and I want to have a big meal. Let's say I want to have a thousand calories. I'm supposed to eat 2000 a day. I'll literally fast. I'll have a big meal in the morning and I'll just fast the whole day until I get to dinner so I can allot for those amount of calories. So most of the time what people do is, oh, I just fasted so I can eat whatever I want. Uh, you know, but when you actually and, and track- let me give you the, 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 I'm going to give you some cultural insight on it. So you're right. They eat whatever they want. But in Ramadan, what's more important than actually, this is culturally speaking, this is incorrect as far as religion. What's more important than the actual meal is dessert. And so after the meal, there's a spread of dessert, no matter where you go. And everybody's just stuffing their faces. And I'm a, listen, I do it too, because the desserts in Ramadan are phenomenal. But that is what, what causes people to gain weight. When I'm, when I'm what kind of desserts, man? Ramadan, Come on, now you got my interest. And <laughs> I'll have to send you a few. Uh, there's something called baklava, which I'm sure you're uh, familiar with. Kanafa, uh, katayif. I can send you some recipes. They're really good, but they'll ruin any person's diet. And, 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 and you mentioned uh, the, the misconception that people have during Ramadan about um, working out and stuff. Um, and I think that it's, it's easy to, to walk away from something that's so difficult, such as maintaining a workout routine. But what they fail to realize is during Ramadan, they don't need to continue to lose weight or uh, increase their results in their routine. As a matter of fact, what they're supposed to be doing is maintaining, right. even while working out and eating healthy. Because it's damn near impossible to do that fast and expect to continue those results you're going to plateau for a little bit but after that fast and after you shock your body once you go back to your routine after ramadan your body's going to be like whoa what's going on and you'll lose the weight even quicker and so that's usually people that want to go on a health craze during ramadan and continue it after that's where they lose the most weight right after ramadan right and if you think about it ramadan gives you a good you know jump start kind of on it Exactly. Because you're building, exactly. I think they're give, it's giving you more of a jump start in the sense of building the discipline to actually do something. Because a lot of what a lot of people forget is that fitness is a journey. Fitness is not something you do for 30 days and stop. And it takes a certain level of discipline to actually accomplish it. So I think that those 30 days of fasting will build that huge discipline. I mean, if you could go 30 days fasting all that time without water and, and sacrificing that takes a, that takes will and takes effort. Yep. So if you can do that, then you could definitely conquer your diet after that. For yep. Sure. Exactly. And scientifically speaking, also your body changes completely the way your liver and your pancreas function with this, uh, regards to glucose levels. And so, um, what, what they normally do changes during Ramadan, your metabolism slows down tremendously. And so you need to keep it on par by eating healthy and by working out. And if you just stop, you're just, <laughs> the inevitable is going to happen and you're going to gain weight and it's going to be harder for you to get back to the gym afterwards. 
Right. One of the things that, you know, we talk about all the time is when you're, when you're trying to really burn body fat, the most important thing is muscle, right? So right. muscle is the only thing that burns body fat. So the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism is going to be. Except exactly. when you go through a long period of fasting, your cortisol levels go down and your insulin sensitivity actually improves. So that means that when you do have foods and certain carbohydrates and things like that, your body actually utilizes those foods a lot better. And a lot of people don't realize it too, but mostly everybody fasts eight hours every day. You know, we sleep, we don't when eat anything. Sleep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it's not impossible. Like intermittent fasting came around and I kind of laugh at it because people like make it like it's this big magical thing, but it just helps you to feel fuller on a diet. So I actually think that someone during Ramadan can actually uh, improve their fitness as well. And I know you said maintaining it, but I think you can actually improve it because now you can understand that, okay, I need X amount of calories. So as long as I just focus on my calories, you know, and not go crazy with the different desserts, I'm good. Right. Exactly. So, and you mentioned a couple of things that you ate and I think that that was a, a good, and I'd like the idea that you said, cause I was actually going to talk about that too. Um, what were some, what are the, some of like a, like a, so when you're dieting and you're trying to lose body fat, what was like a typical day of eating like for you, um, during Ramadan? I know you mentioned getting up earlier. Um, so when you were really strict on it and you really want to lose body fat, let's just say, forget it going into this right now, Friday, if it starts Friday, if it starts Thursday, you're dieting. Okay. You gave yourself a challenge. You wanted to lose body fat during this time. What would you do with your food? Talk about a typical day for you and what it would look like during Ramadan and right. exercise yeah. routine. All right. Well, uh, all right. You're going to correct me when I mess up. <laughs> <laughs> you After fine, I'm done, anyway. I'm gonna, I'm a, you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me what I should do then. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm probably going to mess up. Nah, so what fine, I would man. do in the morning, I'd wake up. Um, we have this uh, breakfast food called uh, fava, uh, fava beans and they're mashed, uh, made with like salt, pepper, cumin. So I'd eat the fava beans just to give me a, like a prolonged dose of energy throughout the day. Cause it has carbs. Um, and I would have three boiled eggs, two egg whites and one full, and uh, maybe some cottage cheese, like uh, two teaspoon, two tablespoonfuls, um, and then maybe a cucumber, maybe two cucumbers and some water, maybe some milk. Um, How much? I'm, then, just, I'm just out of curiosity. So when you get up in the morning, in, in the case when you're going to fast, you like down a ton of water just so you no. have it in your system, no, right? No, and 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 when people do that. It's, it's counterproductive, actually, because they end up feeling bloated, then they can't go back to sleep, and then they're tired all day and even hungrier. Right. Um, and also, like, when you increase uh, your intake of water so much, especially if you're going to be working out, and you dilute the sodium levels in your body, you can cause yourself to faint, and marathon runners have died from stuff like that. So it's not a smart idea to... Moderation is key in everything. And I agree so, with that. Yeah. So I'd go um, before that meal, I'd probably take a, if I can't do the run in the morning, I'll take a 20 minute stroll with my dog. Uh, if I can jog a little with her, I would uh, maybe do some hit running, uh, run for a minute, walk for two. Uh, then I come in, I'd eat the meal, pray, go to sleep. I wake up for work. Well, we're quarantined now. So I'll wake up whenever. And uh, around, let's just say six, I'll start working out. Uh push-ups, some, maybe some free weights. Uh, I won't do aerobic workouts so much. And then uh, I'll have my meal at 7.30, probably composed of some sort of protein, uh, not too much sodium, maybe grilled chicken or a piece of skirt steak with some broccoli, asparagus, kale, uh, and then the, the sweet potato or brown rice or quinoa or maybe even wild rice. Um, maybe an avocado for good fats. And then two hours or three hours later, uh, if I feel hungry again, I'll have some yogurt uh, with some honey. And then I'll just go to bed. So, and I, I want to talk about this because this is kind of like, you know, it's funny when a lot of people with intermittent fasting talk about this. So as soon as you have that first meal, how full do you get right away? Um, the, you do get really full, man. You think you can eat more, but you can't, you want to, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Exactly. And every day you eat less and less because your stomach keeps shrinking. Yeah. All right, cool. And I, I, I put together my list of things that I recommend and I, you, this is where you're going to correct me. Okay. Cause if I'm totally okay. wrong with this, I want to know, cause again, this is real world application here. And I don't do this for religious uh, reasons. I know how to fast. I've done that fasting before, but a little different than what we're talking about. So here's where you're going to correct me. But I think the listeners are going to get a lot out of this. So I put together four things to maximize 
someone's goals during Ramadan. Okay. All right. So number one, I said no, hit, no cardio during that time. No hit okay. cardio, no cardio at all. Uh, remember when you're fasting, your muscles and your body is just depleted of glycogen, which is your stored energy in your muscles. Right. So obviously you're not drinking water either. So you want to kind of reserve that and you want to utilize, you know, you want to work smarter, not harder. So what that basically means is you want to focus on the basics. And one of the things I tell people all the time is, you know, when you're trying to lose body fat, the most important thing is in speeding up your metabolism is not cardio. It's actually building muscle. And we talked about okay. that earlier, but I like to compare um, doing cardio to taking like a Z pack when you're sick. It's a very reactive thing. Okay. I did cardio. I burned 300 calories. Boom. I burned 300 calories. Oh, when I'm sick, I take a Z pack. It, it makes me feel better but it's almost like skipping taking your multivitamin and your vitamins and minerals you should be taking. And weight training is your vitamins and minerals because the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism is going to be. So you, especially during Ramadan, you want to work smarter, not harder. So you actually want to lift weights in that sense um, instead of doing any cardio. So I would actually preserve the cardio. I think it's good to go for a walk with like, like you said, you're going for the walk with the dog and stuff, but that's activity. That's a little bit different, but I recommend doing that. Uh, my second thing was to drink, eight to 16 ounces of water quickly um, as soon as you kind of break your fast because it dilutes your stomach acid. And I would have, a, this is very similar to what you said, a whole protein meal, whole foods, uh, making sure you're having lean proteins and stuff like that. During this time, I would also increase your lean protein intake because the more protein you consume, uh, the fuller you're going to be because protein takes, up, uh, takes time to digest in your body and your body actually has to heat up a little bit to burn those calories off. Uh, my third tip was... Um, eat before breakfast, which is what you said, you know, wake up earlier, eat a little meal. Mm -hmm. I would have something high protein based during that time. And then I would do exactly what you said, work out and then break your fast because you're already in a depleted state at that point. You're going to work out and further deplete yourself. So as soon as you go home and break that fast and start eating, your body is going to suck up those nutrients like a sponge. So the food's going to go right to building muscle, which will help to speed up your metabolism in the long haul. And again, I think the fourth tip, is really just controlling your calories and not going crazy on the baklava and all the other desserts yep. that, there, that is out there. Cause that's the key. If you, you know, you fast all day, you're going to have that huge meal. You're going to be full. And then you're going to get like a hinkering before bed. And you're going to be like, oh, I'm starving. I gotta eat something else. Cause the sun's yep. down. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. So th that's, so that's pretty much my tips. I think, I think that should be right. It's right on par with what you said. Most of it. Uh, just the water thing. As soon as you break your fast, having two cups of water, eight to 16 ounces, um, that is not uh, a good idea just because of personal experience and experience of people around me, because uh, you fill your stomach up with water and you literally cannot eat at that point. If you yeah. drink eight to 16 ounces. So usually what you're supposed to do is you drink uh, half a cup, maybe four to eight ounces of water, but with a date, uh, and then you can have dinner maybe 15 minutes later. Yeah, you definitely yours. have to pace yourself, I think. I think yeah. a lot of people, as soon as the fast ends, because I know, um, you know, in the Jewish, in the Jewish uh, religion, they fast, I forget for what it is, but they break the fast. For 24 they hours. Eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, but they, they eat everything at that main, like right, they try yeah. to eat right away as soon as possible. And that's impossible to do. You have if to you, take that little bit of a break. If you meant eight to 16 ounces of water, like, uh, spread out. Yeah. 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 But as soon as you break the fast, I would, I would have to disagree yeah. with, with that. But, but if you want to spread it out, then yes. Uh, so if people are at the gym, all they got to bring into them is a date or two. Uh, it's a little fruit carrying in your pocket. This is what I do when I used to play, uh, like, uh, team sports, I'd have two dates in my uh, uniform pocket and I'll be on the field playing soccer and the time to break uh, fast comes. And I just step to the side, have two dates and get some water and get back on the field. When the game is done, then I'd go, uh, have my dinner. Yeah. I think that that's an ideal way to do it too. Cause also now you're also spacing out that time that you're exactly. eating instead of like trying to be a glutton and eat everything. And like you said too, especially for religious reasons, you also want to have that ability to, I don't know if you have to pray after at night also. You do, yeah. Yeah. So you want to be able to have that ability and not be able to, because all those, if you sit down and have a huge meal and then all the desserts right after that, you're going to go into like a carb coma. Yeah, it's exactly what happens because also the foods in Ramadan, I mean, I said that I talked about the desserts, but the foods are very, very heavy in carbs, very high in carbs. 
And so when you sit down and your stomach hasn't seen food all day and all of a sudden you're eating pasta with bread and uh, macaroni and on a bunch of different things, your stomach's like, what the fuck is going on, bro? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you gotta use, if you start with a date, you're like, oh, okay. My stomach is being introduced to a small fruit and some water. It's getting it started. 15 minutes later, maybe I'll have a little salad. Okay. Then I just keep moving towards uh, you know, making it work a little bit harder, but stuffing it right away with pasticcio and a bunch of different things is just not smart. Right. I agree with that. And you're gonna I've been there. It. I felt like ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this. Um, any, any advice for someone who's listening to this, who's just starting with fitness and, you know, says, okay, Ramadan's coming. I, should I quit? Should I quit? Doing don't use movie? Ramadan. Don't use Ramadan as an excuse to stop your fitness goals. That is, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, that is not okay. <laughs> because, um, I think that even when I was a trainer and I had people come in uh, and, uh, and train with me and around Ramadan, they just fall apart. The funny thing is I was also Muslim and fasting and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. So why aren't you coming? I'm here. <laughs> you should be here too. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But the thing, like I said, I mean, it's all about the food that they eat. Uh, staying away from fried foods is super, super, super important to keep, uh, hydrated. Uh, and I know it's hard because you, you know, well, for your stomach too. And... forget like fitness yeah, aside, for your stomach exactly. also. Yeah. But all those things come out during Ramadan. Like I know the Southeast Asian American community uh, loves samosas in Ramadan and they're delicious and I love them, but it's easy to go in the habit. One samosa, two samosa, three samosa, boom. You're just like sitting on the couch, you can't move. And they're, you know, it's a delicious fried treat, but you, you shouldn't you should stay away. Right, also now. the spicy. <laughs> stay away from spicy because that'll make you thirsty too well yeah yeah but you but you're allowed to drink as much as you want once the sun goes down right so you are you are mm -hmm. so when you were really training i'm just curious and I, this is just for me so you you know you're supposed to drink about a gallon of water a day give or take so when you were really training where you were probably weren't even coming close no nah, no nah. when i was fasting i wouldn't be close to a gallon i would try but i'd feel that bloated feeling that i'm telling you about yeah it was very uncomfortable how much water would you say you would end up getting then? Just out of curiosity. Uh, maybe four cups. Yeah, give or take four cups. Yeah. yeah. And again, it all boils down to every person's different also, right? Like if exactly. you're going to have protein shakes, there's obviously going to be more liquid in there than anything else. I'd recommend though, if you're going to, if you're going to really do this right and try to maximize this, try to stick to as much whole foods as you can. You don't really, at this point, you don't want to have any liquid calories at all. Cause it's just going to take up no room in your stomach and you're going to be like, Oh, I have room for dessert now. Mm -hmm. So I, exactly. I definitely would, I definitely would have all whole foods. Um, is out, I'm just out of curiosity too. Is alcohol, any part of alcohol, any part of this too? Uh, alcohol is not allowed in the Muslim religion to begin with. It's so not, definitely not doing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, that's good. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually in, uh, in most countries you go to that uh, are predominantly Muslim, they don't even serve alcohol during that month. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like if you go to Dubai like I said, or something, you won't be I know with the, um, in the Jewish, in the Jewish religion, I know that they do like, um, something with wine. Like that's part of like the ceremony. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. Very man. different. Very different. Well, Kareem, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really, really appreciate you, your brother. time. And I really appreciate you doing this to help people out. Cause I think, like I said, you know, I, I love to see people may have success in fitness but you know, I hate when roadblocks come up and this is one of the roadblocks that some people face. And I think that this episode and listening to this and hearing it from, from you directly, I think it's going to go a long way in helping people say, you know what? I, I can do it. If Kareem can do it. I can do it. These are the things I got to do. And just, it's just about changing your mindset. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on bro. Salam Alaikum. <laughs> awesome buddy. Thank you.